This morning, the new battles at the border over the most dangerous narcotic law enforcement has ever seen and how cartels are getting drugs across. We told you recently about how the fentanyl problem in the United States has gone from bad to worse as we spend time on the streets of Maine, plus inside a maximum security prison. Now a different trip to the busiest border crossing in the world. At the San Ysidro port of entry in between San Diego and Tijuana, more than 65,000 vehicles cross every day. So what are we passing through now? So this is a piece of what we call our non-intrusive inspection technology. So this enables us to scan as a driver drives his or her vehicle through. We're looking for packages concealed within that vehicle. Port Director Marisa Marin says by now, 60% of all the fentanyl seized in the United States is found at border crossings in Southern California. When did fentanyl start becoming a big deal here? So we first saw fentanyl in 2008, but really we've seen a skyrocket in fentanyl since fiscal year 2019. You'll see what the officer is doing. Um, he's using a, what we call a fiber optic scope. Um, and so that has a camera at the end and it enables him to look in the gas tank. They store the packages in gas tanks. Absolutely, and so we've seen it in different ways. There could be packages floating in the gas tank or they could build a separate compartment within the gas tank so that there's both gas and space for the narcotics. And the packages of fentanyl we're talking about coming in are typically like yay big? Yeah, I'd say, you know, the size maybe of a brick could be a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of fentanyl. Do they hide stuff in the seats? They don't only hide stuff in the seat, so I'm going to push on the seat to make sure that it feels right. The CBP officers who run the vehicle inspections search for signs of hidden drugs in places most would never think to look. Sometimes they can create a compartment right here, and I don't see any new screws or anything. There's no thumbprint over here. It's all dirty. I mean, it hasn't been touched. I'm not trick. You put your feet over here yeah. and you tap it this way to, to hear the vibration on the other side. Yeah. It's a lot of stuff to search. Yeah. Assisted by trained canines, they can search thousands of vehicles a day. It's a constant cat and mouse game here. They're trying to get better at what they're doing and you're trying to... And we're trying to counter those efforts. Efforts which include not just where they hide the drugs, but also who they use to carry them. Right now we're seeing a trend in minors um, and young adolescents who come from um, less economic means um, being targeted in high schools, in junior highs. Um, and these smuggling organizations are offering them, for them, what seems is a lot of money, $500, $1,000, and tell them to put this in your pocket, put this in your backpack, and cross the border with it. How long has that trend been going on for? It's increased in the last few months with the trend uh, for, for juveniles smuggling across our ports of entry. Um, I think that the smuggling organizations are very agile. Then there are the far more elaborate efforts. We're here just a stone's throw from the border. You can see part of a border wall just across that parking lot. Across this street, there's a warehouse building. Looks like hundreds of other warehouse buildings along the U.S.-Mexico border here in San Diego. But last May, authorities found underneath that building, six stories underground, a tunnel that was 1,700 feet long, connecting the two countries, that was used for drug smuggling. That tunnel had electricity and small train tracks. And authorities have no idea how long it was in operation, who was running it, and how many others like it may be left. It's getting worse. It continues to grow. What do you need to help? So for us at CBP, it's layered enforcement. It's the ability to really focus technology, um, layer our enforcement efforts, and as we look at trends for smuggling techniques, fentanyl um, kids, a very small portion can go a long way, and it doesn't have to be a huge amount to be able to make an impact to our community. How many of these vehicles would you have to search to stop all the drugs from coming in? The ability to find every single piece of fentanyl that's smuggled into the United States, quite frankly, doesn't exist. Um, but it's really the effort to leverage both technology, officer instincts, training and intelligence uh, to really, really deter some of this illicit activity. 
New CBP numbers out just last week about the number of narcotics being seized in the last period. Marijuana down, cocaine down, heroin down, meth down, fentanyl up. Wow. And it's being, it's being laced in all of these drugs as well. So yeah. it remains so deadly and so dangerous. Is it taking over where these other drugs are sort of losing some popularity or? I mean, people are taking it by itself and then it's being laced, laced into them into as those. well. Yeah. Which is why, I mean, somebody told us last year there's no such thing as, rec they say there's no such thing as recreational drug use anymore right. because you never know, you never know when, when it might be laced batch, with something right. like fentanyl. And I think we all sort of, Michelle and I at least, in that moment of who's, who's smuggling it and you hear about the kids children. and children for $500, $1,000. Well, I know, I know two people um, close to my family family who lost their lives because they smoked marijuana laced, laced yeah. with, with fentanyl. fentanyl. Young people it's yeah. terrible. in their 20s. Awful. Yep. Great reporting that you've been doing on it, Jeff, though. Really great.